In order to make the orbiter as light as possible, we decided we were going to put the fuel in a separate tank, the external tank, and the orbiter was mounted on top of the external tank. The external tank then became the backbone of the whole structure because then we had the two solid rocket boosters that were mounted to the external tank. It carried 1.6 million pounds of fuel and emptied out in eight minutes. Without the external tank, it would not have gone into orbit. By January 1972, the Space Shuttle program was given the green light. It was decided early on that while many of the Space Shuttle's components could be reclaimed and reused after launch, it just wouldn't be feasible to do that with the proposed external tank. Instead, the external tank would separate from the orbiter and then disintegrate in the Earth's atmosphere. With development of the external tank being overseen by Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, NASA returned to a familiar site to begin construction of the external tanks. Mishu Assembly Facility in New Orleans, Louisiana. We were going to build it at Mishu, uh, as we had built the first stage of the Saturn V there. It was a great plant, uh, 42 acres under one roof, which was nice to have. So if you can just imagine, there's over 3,000 people at the Martin Company, later Lockheed Martin, down in New Orleans that would build an aluminum tank. It started off at some 70,000 pounds through different programs that we had, we, we were able to reduce the weight of the external tank, which allowed us to put more payload into the space shuttle to low Earth orbit. We were constantly required to take out weight. First thing we did, we had the initial external tanks painted white in order to protect the foam underneath from ultraviolet radiation. In the meantime, we had samples being exposed to sunlight and we found that we didn't really need to put the paint on there. We left the paint off and that was 600 pounds of paint and it did not affect, so the rest of the tanks were orange. The first five missions used the standard weight tank. Then with the sixth shuttle mission, they introduced the lightweight tank, which weighed 11,000 pounds less and was used until the super lightweight tank was developed and flown in 1998, becoming the final model of the external tank to be used. The super lightweight tank used a new aluminum lithium alloy to bring the weight down another 7,000 pounds. The reduction in weight helped aid NASA in constructing the International Space Station and launched large payloads like the Chandra X-ray Observatory. Even though the shuttle program ended in 2011, the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama still honors the accomplishments of the space shuttle program with the Pathfinder shuttle stack, which is currently undergoing restoration. The orbiter test article has been removed and is being assessed while work is getting underway on the stack's external tank, an artifact which has a storied history itself. For the external tank, this one is the first external tank that was ever manufactured. So it is serial number one, um, and it was used not just to you know, prove that the tank design was good, but it also was hooked up to a test stand in Mississippi and used it to qualify the space shuttle main engines as well. They would fill it up, light the engines and pump it through, and it would burn for the appropriate amount of time. And this tank actually has seen more cycles in terms of filling and draining and firing than any of the flight tanks because they would typically have only gone once. And this went literally hundreds of times. And so there's a huge amount of program history built into that, that orange tank. However, getting this piece of program history from Stennis Space Center in Mississippi to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Alabama was no easy task. During Mardi Gras, a test team went down there and pulled it out of its test stand after 10 years of testing to bring it here to Huntsville. We got to the center and we had to make a 90 degree turn. And when we made that turn, there was a tree in the way. I didn't calculate a tree. So we got with the center director, said get a chainsaw, cut the tree down. So we had to sacrifice a tree to get the uh, uh, 76,000 pound tank in its place. On February 16, 1988, the main propulsion test article external tank was successfully delivered to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, where in May of that year, it was mated with the Pathfinder test article and two experimental solid rocket boosters to form a full shuttle stack. For over 30 years now, the shuttle stack has inspired countless generations of museum guests and space camp trainees, and will continue to do so for generations to come thanks to the continuing restoration efforts. 
Work is ongoing to strip the external tank of its foam. The external tanks were sprayed with foam to keep the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen cool inside the tank and to minimize ice buildup while the tank was on the launch pad. Once the foam is removed, the tank will be assessed and new foam better suited for long-term outside display will be sprayed onto the tank, all with the eventual goal of having the full stack on display once more. Thank you.